Testing the sound, one, two, three. Testing sound, one, two, three.
Alright, hello, hello. Can't hear anything. Hey there, Mr. Word. We will be starting at 10 a.m., but if everybody does want to check their mics, go right ahead. Finally, someone said something, so, okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, this is Johnson. A little dark, okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Keep talking for a second. I'm gonna check the live stream and make sure that that's working too. I hope my cat doesn't step on the computer and disconnect me like uh, he did with the last faculty meeting. <laughs> Cute cat. Thank you. Mm. He's keeping me good company these days. Is it, what's his name? Buck. Buck. Nice. <laughs> All right, buddy, keep it moving. There you go. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there. Exactly. Good, thanks. If anybody had told me two weeks ago I'd have a two week spring break, I would have been thrilled. I would, had no idea it would be so difficult. It's not much of a spring break now, is it? No, no. No, <laughs> oh, it's trauma informed teaching remotely. <laughs> So just as a reminder to everybody, we are live um, on YouTube. And so I'm gonna share the uh, link in our chat. Um, there are viewers already, I see 21 viewers, but that's awesome. Um, and so for teachers, I'm gonna share the link and hopefully that went through. Um, so that if you want to see some of the questions that are being asked, um, you're able to do that. Can you send that link on email, please? Yes. I'm going to get on it on another computer behind this one. Good idea. Thank you. Okay, let me know if that works for you guys. And for our listeners, uh, please let us know on your comments, uh, in the comment section um, that you're hearing us okay. And then we will uh, try to get started on time at 10 a.m. Um, and then we'll talk about the sequence of events during that time.
So I'm going to take a moment while we're still setting up to test things out, um, including what this looks like for our live viewers. So bear with me. Uh, okay, so I need to, um, I have like three computers going, so I will be going to the other computer for a second to stop streaming from there and I will try to live stream from here. So let's see. So just testing to see. Okay, so just testing to see if um what is being broadcasted is all of our faces or just a few of ours? <laughs> Hello everyone and um, thanks for coming. Uh, we're still figuring out some uh, issues and trying to get things to match up. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can get everybody's face on the streaming part. So
So thanks guys for uh, your patience as we work this out. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what screens um, our viewers are able to see. So, um, and I know that there's like a 20 second delay between um, our conference and what our viewers can see. So um, I just wanna make sure that there's a way for everybody to uh, see our teachers. So I'm gonna figure that out. All right, we are going to try something else uh, to make sure that our viewers can see all of our teachers that they're talking to. So um, could I just have um, maybe Ms. Morgan, since you're right there, can you go ahead and um, just introduce yourself briefly so I can check and make sure that this is working on the stream? Um. Good morning. I'm Sarah Morgan. I'm a sixth grade English teacher at Keeling Middle School. Um, I teach sixth grade magnet and several electives. One is called Blank Page. It's a creative writing course. One called Explore Austin, which is a course based on students um, learning about Austin and um, uh, deciding and helping plan field trips to go to these places in Austin. I also teach a class called Food for Thought, which is learning about um, the wonderful food we have access to here in Austin. And we learn about food from all over the world as well. Students do a big project based on um, International World Food Day, where they pick a country and a city in that country to discover their food. And then the second six weeks, we work on a little more serious content about why cheap food is not necessarily good food and the business um, aspect of food. So it's a little bit scary sometimes. And I always have at least one student who becomes a vegetarian. And then the third six weeks, we go back to um, some fun looking at food in art and music and movies and the symbolism of food. And that's really fun. And I teach a fourth elective called poetry where students really choose. It's really student driven about how much you want to study, whether you want to read poetry and study about famous poets, or if you're wanting to create poetry. I try and keep a good balance of both of those things for everybody, but some students choose one concentration over the other of just reading or more writing, although students do both. So those are the electives I teach. Awesome. Thanks, Ms. Morgan. Yeah. And it does work, at least, so we know that if you're yeah. talking teachers, um, you will be full screen on the YouTube chat. So that's awesome. Um, I'm going to try to see um, if I could do a split view. Um, something tells me that that probably seems too ambitious at this time. So, <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and get started. It is 10 a.m. And um, for our uh, viewers, um, thank you so much for attending um, this choice fair virtual event. Um, we were really disappointed that we're not able to meet you all in person. I know our teachers are so looking forward to that. Um, and But this is kind of the next best option that we were able to provide, um, some sort of virtual event so you can see us. Um, you guys will be able to uh, talk with each other through the chat. And then I really appreciate all the families who have already done the Nearpod lesson. Um, that was a great introduction for all of our students. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, share one of my screens. And um, 
a lot of our students were able to post um, you know, something about themselves, something that they're looking forward to at Keeling and something that they um, might be a little more worried about. And I love reading these. So I'm going to uh, just share my screen for a moment. So these are just some of the comments. Um, I hope you're able to read them. Um, might be a little blurry, but um, it was so great to read some of this stuff. And I know so many of you guys were saying that you're a little worried about, you know, not being able to finish the rest of this school year the way we probably intended. Um, but really great comments, questions here. And I'm so excited to, um, to try to help uh, you know, ease some of the angst that we have uh, in joining the program next year. Um, we'll be mainly focusing today's questions on the questions that you guys posted on the Nearpod according to each of the departments and specifically those electives. So during this whole time, we're really gonna just focus our time mostly on the elective courses so that you can make informed decisions about which courses excite you the most and then you can complete your Google form during um, after this session. Um, but uh, at the end, if we have some time, we'll be able to address some more broader questions. Um, our teachers that are on staff, a lot of them, many of them have been in the program for many, many years and they have a wealth of experience uh, that they could share with you all. And then we also have a lot of our teachers that have had students that have gone through the program. They might be able to share their insights um, from a parent perspective. Um, and, and then we'll wrap this whole thing up. So um, this should be available for you guys to all view uh, on YouTube, um, you know, and refer back to. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, get get started. So I'm going to share my other screen. Um, so if you take a look, the uh, department representatives that we have here are um, listed in order from what, how they will be presenting and answering questions. Um, we're going to start with fine arts with Miss Duvall. She is our amazing band director. And um, we will have an opportunity to answer specific questions about Van. Um, can I just check with you, Ms. Duvall? Um, did you get a chance to look at the questions ahead of time? Yeah, I actually um, put them into a document and I like, I don't know, I have them all on a page. <laughs> you are awesome. <laughs> all right. um, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, you guys uh, all submitted a few uh, fine arts electives that you wanted to know more about. Um, you posted some questions, really great questions that we're hoping Ms. Duvall will be able to help answer. Um, there were two courses here, so um, lots of really great questions. Uh, and Ms. Duvall, thank you so much for preparing all that. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, if that's okay, and then we'll just kick it over straight to you. Yeah, sure. Um, so I kind of went through um, the posted questions and some of them were a little repetitive, so I'll try to group them together when I can. Um, so one of the questions I saw that came up a couple of times was a question about our orchestra class. Um, orchestra, if you if you don't know what it is, is actually a really cool ensemble. It's made up of kids who are currently in orchestra. Um, a lot of them are already in our advanced um, orchestra classes, like our symphony orchestra, our philharmonic orchestra, et cetera. So orchestra is something that's like an extension of the orchestra classes. So in order to um, be able to join that class, you'll also want to be enrolled in an advanced orchestra class at the same time. So um, if you're coming in as a sixth grader or, or as a seventh grader with prior um, string instrument experience, what I recommend to you is go ahead and reach out to our orchestra teachers. I'm going to miss Harrell and uh, Mr. Jarrett. Um, both of their emails are listed on our school website and let them know that you're interested in um, 
auditioning for an advanced group. And then from there, um, if you happen to also be interested in joining the orchestra, um, you can talk to them about that. Um, there's also a question about whether or not guitar is separate from um, orchestra. Uh, our guitar program is um, all separate. So it's, it's actually uh, taught and led by uh, Miss Harrell. We have an, a, a beginning guitar course as well as an advanced guitar course. Um, so if you have never played the guitar before and are really interested in learning how to play that, you can um, uh, put guitar on your choice sheet. Um, if you have some experience playing, because I actually saw a few questions about that, like you, uh, some students were saying that they had experience playing guitar and were interested in um, doing the advanced guitar class. If you're interested in doing any sort of advanced fine arts class at all, whether it's advanced theater, um, advan uh, doing an advanced band class or an advanced orchestra class, anything that is above the beginning level, um, I would recommend that you go to our Keeling Middle School website and on our fine arts page, we have a document on there where you can um, get the contact info for the teachers for each one of those classes and let them know that you're interested in doing an advanced class in that uh, specific subject area. Um, and then on your choice sheet, make sure you put that elective on your choice sheet. So no matter what level you end up taking of that elective, you at least have that accounted for on um, the choice sheet itself. Um, there are a few questions about music production and getting some more info on that. Um, I'd also would directly you to our fine arts page for more info on that. Um, we have a really awesome teacher, Mr. Eisler, who teaches that class. Um, they do everything from um, like putting like loops together and producing music and there's um, specific software that they use in that class to do that. So I would definitely, if you have any like specific questions about music production itself, you can reach out to him, his emails on our school website. Um, this year, normally what we've done on this date in the past is we have an instrument tryout day and students are able to come out and try the different string instruments, the different band instruments, and with our current situation, um, that obviously is very different this year. So what we're planning to do for um, instrument tryouts for this year, um, we, were to, we would like for you to definitely put on um, whatever music class you're interested in on your choice sheet. So if that's band, put band, if it's orchestra, put orchestra. And then from there, we're actually gonna follow up specifically with those students. Um, in your email, you'll receive a link to a survey. It's basically like a, a survey just asking like, what are your top three choices of for instruments and then we'll get back to you um, sometime between now um, and the end of the school year to get more information about how you may actually get an opportunity to try instruments. Um, there, is, there's, there is a possibility where we might not be able to make that happen and if that does, if we're not able to do any sort of instrument tryouts between now and the end of the school year, what I think we're probably going to end up planning right now is welcome dates in the summer um, where you can come out and try the instruments that way. So we're kind of TBD in terms of an actual day to do that kind of thing right now. But I can at least say for um, for um, data collecting purposes that you will be able to list your top choices for instruments and we'll kind of go from there. Um, there's a question about whether or not you need to have a background in instruments to, to take our classes. Um, you do not have to have any instrumental background at all. Um, actually, most of our sixth graders who join um, band, orchestra, choir, uh, don't have any prior experience other than maybe like doing recorder or playing an orphan instrument. So um, you do not have to have any experience to join any of our music classes. Um, we start from scratch when you come in with um, how to put the instruments together, how to sit with good posture. Um, if you're in choir, you'll go over like the basics of music theory and how to read music so you don't have to have any prior experience to do any music classes and if you do have some prior experience and already play or sing or something like that um like i mentioned earlier you can reach out and figure out how to get um more info for advanced classes uh there's a question from someone who's interested in choir saying that they were they don't feel comfortable singing alone in front of a crowd um if it's is it a requirement in choir to sing alone and that that question can actually really pertain to any um music course so usually when you're in a music class like band choir and orchestra you're going to be in what we call an ensemble so you're going to be with a, a group of people together um there are some opportunities to do solos and to do ensembles um they depending on the class you're not necessarily going to be required to to do those um but we do encourage individual musicianship and development so the really great thing about our um, fine arts staff is that we're we're really passionate about what we do and so we feel very confident that by the end of that course you, you will have enough confidence to be able to play or sing an instrument alone um there are so there are actually quite a, ball. oh sorry yeah. hang, hang tight for just a second um you're talking super fast which <laughs> So hold on one sec. We're going to um, just try to see if I can um, answer just a few of the questions that were already there. I think you probably already have the questions on your um, thing, but I just want to slow down so that 
Um, viewers, if you are on the, um, the, the YouTube page right now, um, I know that there's a lot of chat happening. Um, if you're able to kind of focus the chat specifically towards questions, uh, that will really help us out to kind of decipher which questions still need to be answered. Um, I know you guys are getting really excited with, um, you know, introducing yourselves and um, saying hello to each other and seeing where you guys are all from. Um, and I really do want to give you that opportunity. We might have some time at the end. Um, but we want to make sure that we have some time for our um, our department representatives to really answer the questions that you guys are most interested in. So if you could do me a favor and in the chat on YouTube, really just focus um, on asking pertinent questions. Um, if you don't hear them already answered, we'll give a moment at the end um, of each department's um, presentation to review back and see if there's any additional questions that we missed, okay? Uh, thank you, Mr. Ball, sorry for interrupting you. There was one question about um, uh, students who have advanced, uh, like they do have some experience in um, and an instrument. I know we put that on the fine arts, uh, part of the website, um, explanations of what to do if you want to um, show your portfolio or, you know, do a video demonstration. Can you describe that part uh, again for us just real quick? Yeah, um, so if you're interested in doing, um, if, like, let's, if, let's say, for example, you're um, interested in doing um, an advanced performance class, that would be band, choir, orchestra, theater. Um, on our school website, there's links and info for, um, like, uh, basically, who to contact for that. And for all of those performance-based classes, you'll want to submit some kind of video of you demonstrating those skills. So it depends on the class, but if you go to that website, you'll see specific um, things we'll be looking for. For that, um, for art, um, advanced art, yeah, on the website it does say to um, have some kind of like portfolio put together so you can demonstrate some of the work um, that you've done before. Um, and for theater, it's also going to be a performance-based thing. Uh, Miss Pena Brooks, our, our theater teacher, has information for what to include in a video for those advanced classes. Thank you. Um, I think there was one other question. Do you have to have your own instrument? That's a great question. Um, as of right now, like if you're coming in and if you're wanting to join um, a band or orchestra class as a beginner. Um, you do not need to have any instruments right now. What we do um, in the fall, like when we come back to school, um, we do have a good number of students who do go out and um, rent an instrument. There's some local music stores that provide that option. We also have a good number of students who um, end up renting an instrument from the school, um, from Keeling itself. So we have school instruments for for every single instrument, whether that's everything from a flute to a string bass. Um, so we've got quite a few um, instruments available through the school itself. I'd say right now, um, maybe about 60 to 70% of our students have their own instrument that they're they're renting from or have it or they own it. Um, and then the other like 30 to 40% are, are using school instruments. Um, but you don't need to have an instrument right now in order to be in a music class, uh, in a band or orchestra class. Other question that I keep seeing is about piano. Um, mm -hmm. I know our piano class is specifically for complete beginners. Um, do you have any suggestions for students who have taken piano and want to continue on in that um, in that area? Yeah, that's a great question. And we get that um, pretty much every year. <laughs> so so yeah, we do have a, a beginning piano class and it is meant strictly for beginners. So if you do want to do piano, just keep that in mind in signing up for that class. Um, when it comes to um, continuing to play the piano, unfortunately, we don't have a specific advanced piano class at our school. That's kind of a combination of facilities, um, number of teachers, like there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of factors that go into offering that kind of class. So unfortunately, you don't offer that at this time. However, um, we do utilize the piano in our music classes on a time to time basis. Um, for example, we have a jazz band class, which is made up of students who are enrolled in an advanced band class, but are also playing um, instruments in our jazz band class. So the past few years, we've had um, students who double on instruments. So like this year, our piano player is a percussionist. Uh, last year, we had a piano, we had two piano players who are trading off. One was a uh, bassoon player. The other one was a French horn player. So I would recommend um, if you're wanting to continue your piano studies, uh, continue to take your lessons, you know, continue to grow that way. Um, when it comes to what 
kind of um, options we have at Keeling for that. I would highly encourage you to consider um, trying out um, a second instrument. Um, we have students who, who play piano who've become very successful at uh, playing a second instrument. Um, if you're looking for instruments that have a little bit more of a challenge because you're already coming to um, a music class with a certain level of experience. Um, there's double reed instruments like the oboe and the bassoon um, that are considered a bit more challenging, but I think as a piano player that you may actually enjoy that kind of challenge. Um, in the brass family, the French horn is a great instrument to maybe think about if you're a piano player. Um, we also in band have percussion, percussion be snare drum, bass drum, um, mallet instruments. If, you, if you're if um, you a piano player, we actually have a piano playing requirement in order to start those instruments at healing. So um, that would be a great option. Um, going over into the strings. Um, something like the viola or the cello or string bass may be a good thing to consider if you're a piano player. Um, but the bottom line is we unfortunately don't have like a specific advanced piano class. But I definitely would highly, highly, highly encourage you to consider um, learning a second instrument so that way you can utilize your piano skills in um, a piano orchestra class in addition to um, that other instrument. Um, so Oh, go ahead. Students who need uh, more information about that, would you direct them to contact uh, the band or orchestra directors directly or um, just submit something that says what instrument they might be interested in? So um, for, for any of our band and orchestra classes, like if you're wanting to, to learn second instrument and you're a piano player, all you have to do is just put band or orchestra on your choice sheet. We're gonna follow up with the students directly with um, information for like how they can list their instrument choices. Um, if they, um, we actually got an email recently from someone who's interested in doing jazz band. Um, because jazz band is considered um, an extension of the band program and it's something that it's a class where you'd have to also be enrolled in an advanced band class at the same time. If you're wanting to do piano and jazz band, I encourage you to do um, uh, either beginning band or beginning orchestra as a sixth grader. And then as a seventh grader, you can utilize your piano skills, but you do, you'd be playing the piano in addition to whatever other instrument you have learned your um, beginner year. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to give you about five more minutes and then we'll move to the next department. So questions that you feel um, are most uh, asked still go right ahead. Yeah, I saw a lot of questions about what kind of dance students can take at Keeling. And unfortunately, this time we don't have um, a dance program. I know like LASA has um, a dance program there, but we unfortunately don't have that kind of course at um, Keeling. We do have um, within our PE program, we actually do have our French teacher is also a yoga instructor. So we have that kind of thing, but we don't have like a specific dance class offered at Keeling. Um, so unfortunately, it's not one of our fine arts offerings. And I also saw quite a few questions about like, um, if you can do more than one fine art at a time. Um, I'd say as a sixth grader, if you're doing a year long class, you can do a year long plus a semester long fine arts at the same time. Um, as you get into seventh and eighth grade, your schedule opens up a little bit more because you don't have the SNEA requirement at that point, you can um, take two year long um, fine arts at the same time as a seventh and eighth grader. Um, you can't do two year long fine arts as a sixth grader, but you can do one year long plus a semester long um, fine arts. Um, and on top of that, we, we have a lot of kids who are worried about not being able to like um, fit a fine arts schedule and then take all of our really wonderful, awesome options we have for other electives at Keeling that you're gonna hear about in just a bit. Um, I will say that everyone who um, takes a fine arts class has been able to take those different courses. Like you can take Harry Potter, you can take origami, you can take um, Parks and Recreation. You can do all of those classes at the same time as um, doing a fine arts. And that's because you're gonna have room in your schedule to take a combination of year long and semester long courses. Um, if you want to, if you have any more questions that I didn't get to, or um, if you have some, like a, a burning question that I didn't answer, um, I'm going to be watching the YouTube live chat um, once I'm done talking. So you can also post questions there and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I would definitely say follow up on our school website, go to the fine arts page. Um, uh, to look at contact info for teachers because they can definitely answer any other specific questions that you have. Um, I think it's all I've got stuff in. <laughs> Thank you so okay. much, Ms. Duvall. Um, for those of you that are just joining us or maybe joined us midway, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen again so that you know where we are at. Um, let me just make sure that that's working. Um, so right here we are, um, 
Ms. Duvall, uh, our band director, uh, for fine, uh, was our representative for our fine arts department. Um, and we're basically trying to just have about uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, per department to answer really specific questions about those electives uh, tied to those departments. So um, in the chat screen, um, there's a lot of different questions. It's a little bit difficult for us to answer them all um, during these times. So if you're able to focus your questions, if you're listening in uh, to ask questions specifically about electives during while that teacher is representing that department, um, that will help us out and actually make sure that we answer most of your questions. Um, and thank you for bearing with us because this is our first time doing this. So <laughs> appreciate your guys' patience if we don't answer all of the questions. Um, but we're trying to get you at least familiar with most of the classes that we offer. Um, so we are going to move to uh, Miss Morgan. She is our sixth grade ELA teacher. So she will be able to help answer all things ELA. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I believe go for it, Ms. Morgan. Good morning. Um, I, just one quick question. The chat that I see is just a question that I asked and a comment that Strickland has. I don't see questions from students or families. Am I, do I need to go somewhere else? Um, okay, let me double check with you. Um, I will reshare the link in, can, can the other teachers confirm for me really quick? Did you guys get the link that has all of the chat? Maybe I only see it. I'm looking at, I actually have my computer with a split screen. I'm looking at the YouTube live stream uh -huh. and looking at the chat there because uh -huh. I don't see any chat on the Zoom. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, so, so Ms. Morgan, it is in the YouTube part. So I don't know if you have that open. I have the YouTube open. I'm looking at the chat and I have the Zoom open and, and that's how um, uh, uh, I'm uh, conferencing, right? Um, but I, I just went to the link. Um, and also on the Zoom, it says right there, live on YouTube at the top upper right-hand corner. And you can click on that and go where it says view stream on YouTube. And, and then um, from there, you can you know scroll down a little bit and I can see the, the chat from Perfect. the students. Thank you, okay. Mr. Garcia. Now I have two screens. Sorry, let me close this one because I'm hearing everything double. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you want to mute the yeah, YouTube Yeah, mute one. the YouTube video. Yeah. I don't know how to mute. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm sorry. This is very new to me. All right, so I, I'm right now. I'm seeing the Zoom meeting, and I'm going to go off the screen. So I'm looking at the live YouTube. Yes. And, um, but now I can't hear anybody. So don't mute the whole. Okay. Now I see myself and I see questions, and there's a delay, and it's weird. But I'm Sarah Morgan, and I'm a sixth grade. English teacher. And the electives that I teach are poetry and um, blank page, which is a creative writing class, and food for thought, which is a class where we study food from all over the world, specifically here in Austin. And um, we also study about the economy of food and the politics of food. And then um, we study food in movies and songs and poetry and the symbolism of food. So now I'm trying to look at questions. And can people hear me? Yes. Okay, thank can you. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, I can hear so, you. yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you um, didn't mute your whole screen. So I can help you with some of the questions if you like. Did you get a Great. chance to look at the questions um, that students had posted? I didn't see those. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and share my screen. That might help you just Great. go ahead and yes. Thank you. see some of that. And 
it should say um, ELA and math electives at okay. the top. And um, if you just want to scan. Um, I know one question we get about the Percy Jackson class is whether or not you have to have read all of the books or what happens if you have read all of them. And both of those things happen, of course, in between too. Some people have read some of them. Um, so that is pretty much individually driven. If you have read all of them, the teachers then provide you with other materials to maybe make some comparisons with the books that you've read. And for students who haven't read it, you will obviously have the opportunity to read those books. It's not a class that I teach. Um, I do know that students love it. Um, and even if you're not sure that you would like it, this is a class that has been um, created by teachers who are enthusiastic about Percy Jackson. And lots of times with like all of our electives, the teacher's enthusiasm will often inspire you even if you're not sure that you're inspired about the topic until you get in that classroom. Um, there was a question about blank page. Um, are you able to write your own stories in blank page? Do you have specific direction? Um, Absolutely, great question. Um, blank page, because it's a creative writing class, um, it covers all kinds of creative writing. So what, what I do is each class we start with um, a mini lesson from me that helps you just create writing. So you've got a lot of writing to work with. And then students and I will work individually um, with a contract about what the writing is that each individual student wants to work on and the progress they want to work on. And then we move into writing workshops where students will share that writing with the entire class and students will give them feedback um, that's both written and, and talking about it. And then the the last part of that is ideally getting that work out there in the world, published somehow so that people can read it. Whether it's our school literary magazine, um, Inkblot, or getting it published online, or sending it to actual physical magazines. Students also frequently enter contests. Um, I had a student a couple of years ago win a writing contest. I think it was in the Oregon Public Library for some reason, and won a $50 gift card. So we start from no writing, creating lots of writing, working with it, editing it, then ideally getting out in the world so other people can can see it. There was also a question about food for thought. Um, how is that different from culinary arts? Do you get to make, make your own food and food for thought? <laughs> Great question. Um, in food for thought, we don't have access to the kitchen. We do um, have something that we do in the very beginning of the year where believe it or not, there's a food celebration almost every day. So maybe today is pancake day. And if a student is doing research on that, they have the chance or opportunity if they want to bring pancakes to the class, they can. It's certainly not a requirement. Um, and then when we do our International Food Day, um, we, we ask that students try and bring sort of a potluck, bring that food to class, but we don't cook it in class. We, we just don't have access to, to the what we would need for it. That's certainly not a requirement though, but we do eat some food in class, which is fun. <laughs> Um, I see it's questions about what's so funny, which is an ELA elective um, about studying comedy, how it's written, how it's performed. Um, and students are asked to perform some writing, some comedy that they have prepared and written. Um, don't teach that class, but I do know that students think it's pretty funny and have a good time in the class. Um, I do believe that that course is available for seventh and eighth graders. So if you're a current sixth grader, it won't be open. Um, and when you complete your Google form, and if you're looking at the uh, sixth grade course book, it's really specific about which classes are open to you. So please be sure to look through that so that you know um, what's available to you this year. And then you can still ask questions about some of these courses, but they'll be applicable for you in the following year. I see questions about Star Wars and um, you know the Percy Jackson again, and there's another one that's based on. Do we have another one that's based? On, oh, Harry Potter. Um, I think a lot of students again. It's like you know, if you've read it all, or if you haven't read any, or if you're somewhere in between, teachers make those accommodations to make sure that everybody is learning something new or looking at it in a new and different way. Um, you won't be bored, even if you've read all of it. Um, the projects, the group projects, um, presentations will just be new and different ways to approach that literature. And if you haven't read any of it, um, you're going to have an opportunity and you, you won't be left out. 
um, you will be included in, in group projects and um, everybody will understand that people are in different places with those um, courses based on specific literature or, you know, Star Wars. Um, Can you tell us about Shakespeare and girl power? Sure, Shakespeare's always a super interesting class because not many people sign up about, for it unless you're passionate about Shakespeare. So you'll be meeting with people who are gonna have that same passion. And again, whether or not you've read a ton of Shakespeare or haven't read any, that interest is gonna drive the, the course and the passion for it. Um, it's, it's usually uh, their performances, but not for a huge audience. So don't be scared of that if you're afraid of performing. Um, I know I've seen performances that Shakespeare classes have put together and worked hard on that have been amazing. Um, but again, it's, it's everybody from people who haven't read any Shakespeare to people who have read a lot of Shakespeare and have that passion in common just for Shakespeare. Um, there'll be lots of opportunity to analyze it and it can be very difficult and teachers will help you to understand it um, on all different kinds of levels. Girl Power is a wonderful and fun class with girls talking about um, what's it, what does it mean to be a girl and looking about how girls and women are presented in society and the positive things about that and the negative things about that and how to make it all more positive for everybody to understand what girls experience um, that's different and unique to girls and women. Um, the girls usually form a really strong bond with each other and with other women on our campus, which they might not have done otherwise. If you never had a, a teacher who was a woman, you might meet them through um, the girl power class, which is really powerful. You'll also study about very famous women who've done a lot to improve um, the work life and home life for women all over the world. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. Um, I think you answered a lot of those questions. I do see a lot of questions about Star Wars. Um, and I do <laughs> see the students in the hallways with their Star Wars, the Favors. lightsabers and acting out certain skits. So there is some opportunity to kind of the, um, have fun with that course. Absolutely. Um, can you talk about, um, uh, I know there's a few questions and I want to clarify for everybody. Um, majority of our electives are actually semester long electives. So that's really important to know that you, you if you put, pick a semester long elective, um, you'll probably get something different in, um, in January. Um, no, you do not need to uh, complete a choice sheet again. So we make the full master schedule based off of your um, selections that you make this one time and this one time only. And this is why we ask you to do all this homework and research on all these different courses right now so that um, you're well informed about what decisions you're making um, because we make the entire master schedule based on your request. And so uh, some courses are only available in the fall, some are only available in the spring. So however it lands on your schedule when you receive it in August is where it will be placed. Um, and I'll talk at the end um, about, you know, course changes, but that doesn't really, um, that was covered in the Nearpod lesson. Um, and I do see some questions being asked that um, I'm going to direct you back to that Nearpod lesson um, about course requests just to make sure that you, you still have that information, but it is in that video lesson. I just want to end with saying, if you have further questions for the ELA or, or any of the electives, you can email me. I think Ms. Duvall, you know, said that's a great resource is to go to our KeelingMiddleSchool.org website and go to the teacher directory. You can email me and I can forward those questions to teachers. I'm, I'm a little um, inundated with emails right now, but I'm looking at them as quickly as I, as I can. And I, I'm happy to answer questions through email that I can and to forward them to other people um, as as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. I appreciate your time. Um, I did see Ms. Duvall, our band director. She's been at it in the chat box, um, trying to reply to questions for fine arts still. So thank you so much, Ms. Duvall, for doing that. Um, Ms. Morgan, feel free to respond to any um, through the chat if you still feel like you know you didn't get to it maybe. Um, and then at the end, if we do have some time, we might circle back with a few of you. Um, so if you're just on, you know, around, um, we'll we'll try to get your help. Um, so just going back to the schedule here, um, 
Ms. Morgan uh, just presented about uh, all things ELA. Um, Ms. Strickland is here. She is our uh, math representative. She teaches seventh grade algebra and um, an elective class called Math Counts. Um, here at Keeling, we, um, we have just a few math electives. Um, Mr. Word is also here. So I'm sorry I didn't put your information here. Um, or did he step out? Um, Mr. Word is also here. He teaches geometry um, and math and the arts. So as I'm typing live, that's always great. Um, so I'm going to kick it over to them. Um, we're going to ask for questions uh, to be specifically about the electives at this time. I know that there's always a lot of questions about um, about math placement and all those things. Um, we are um, sending out more information. Uh, my original email said April 1st, and that's the goal that I'm still hoping to uh, stick to. That April 1st, uh, you'll all receive more information about what the math placement test will be like um, and, and those sorts of things. So we're gonna try to focus our attention today on really just the math electives so that you can make informed decisions about which electives you want to select. Um, and then if we have time at the end, we might be able to answer some basic general questions, but we don't get too in detail with um, math sequencing at this time. All right. So, Ms. Strickland, if you're able to unmute. Gotcha. I'm going to stop sharing. And it's all yours. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Can I, what do I need to do so they can see me? I think they could see you already. Okay, great. Because um, <laughs> I'm still looking at you, so I want to make sure that I don't need to do anything on my end. But I know there's um, a 20 second delay, so I'm going to double check in a second, but I think you're good to go. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully, if you can't see me yet, you can hear me. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning in this virtual environment. Uh, and thank you for your patience while we work through all of the technological issues on our end. Um, and I also want to thank everybody for showing their interest in the math electives in the Nearpod uh, post-it pages. That was great. I really appreciate that. Uh, I teach math counts, so I'm going to focus my uh, time talking about that. But I'll also try to respond to questions in the chat as well, like Ms. Duvall is doing a great job of doing. Um, and Mr. Word is here, and he should be talking about math and the arts. Uh, he can give you a little bit of information about how that compares to origami because that is one of the questions that came up as well. So if you're not curious about math counts and you wanna know about math in the arts and origami, Mr. Word will talk about that in just one minute. Um, I'm gonna share my screen actually, if I can figure this out correctly. Yay, it worked. Awesome. So uh, basically, if you're not sure if you're going to like math counts, if you like math, you will like math counts. That's what we're doing. We're exploring math. Um, we base our elective class on the nationwide problem solving competition. And uh, that doesn't mean that you have to be wanting to compete. That just means that that's a place that you can go to find out a little bit more information about the types of problems we do. You can go to mathcounts.org. That's www.mathcounts.org and look at some of the types of problems that are posted there, like in their problem of the week series. Uh, the math topics that are involved go all the way from learning how to do quick arithmetic up to high school level algebra and geometry. So someone had asked, uh, is math counts helpful? And a lot of people do find it helpful in their core math class. So um, it will allow you to learn some things and be exposed to certain topics and learn some tricks about some certain topics uh, earlier than you would learn it in your normal uh, core math class progression. Now, the other hand, you don't have to know that much math yet. That just means that's how much math you'll have the chance to be exposed to. Um, I wanna show you this problem. Uh, 
This is a problem I like to show people when they're asking about math counts because it is a good example of the type of fun math problems we get to do in math counts that don't normally get to come into your core math class because if you're talking about triangles in your core math class, you could be trying to find the area of the triangle or to classify that triangle as an acute or uh, an isosceles triangle, things of that nature. Uh, but these are the types of math problems that sometimes we have the most fun with, that we think about even after we've stopped looking at them. And it's that type of mathematical challenge that people really enjoy about math counts. Uh, I'll give you a hint as you try to work out this problem. I'm gonna leave it up on the screen for a little bit and let you think about it. But uh, when you're looking at the triangles, there are different sizes of triangles and uh, many of them are made up of multiple pieces from within the picture. Now, um, we said that this was based on the national competition and just like that competition, you uh, can be a sixth, seventh or eighth grader in math counts. And these students are typically all mixed together in the same class. But one of the things that students really enjoy is the opportunity to learn from each other, to uh, not just ask the teacher questions, but to ask their classmates questions. When you're in class, you're typically working with your teammates at your table to answer the questions that we're working on. And that's one of the things that I think students really enjoy is that opportunity to discuss and debate math problems, especially when we disagree about the interpretation of a question or the right approach. Um, it, it allows us to learn so much throughout the day, even if we're only doing a few problems. Um, because we have that wide variety of students with a variety of backgrounds, I make sure that there is a variety of problems uh, at different levels of challenge. So I usually don't find that students get bored. I find that some students will finish earlier than others, in which case I can provide them an extra challenge or they can provide assistance to their classmates. Um, because this variety of challenges there, the grades in the class are not based off of your accuracy. I don't expect anyone to be able to get everything right because I'm not just going to necessarily teach you a topic and then you do practice on that topic. You're gonna to get uh, a, an assortment of problems sometimes. And what have we learned so far that will help you solve that problem? But if you're not successful, that doesn't mean that your grade is penalized. Uh, you're graded based off of your efforts. So as long as you are trying, you are applying the problem solving methods that we are learning, you are asking good questions, then grades are not an issue. Homework is not an issue either. You have a core math class, you'll be getting homework assigned from them. I'm not looking to assign you more math homework on top of it. I'm looking to have you engage in really great discussions in my room. You can't really do that so well at home. Ms. Strickland, the, the chat is blowing up. Kids are dying to know what's the answer. <laughs> oh, that, that, I, that's coming up. Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I, I don't, I will not give away the answer, but I will give you a way to figure out the answer. Um, and I love seeing all of the guesses and granted, I'm looking at a small snippet, but so far I do not see the right answer on the screen. But I am glad to see a lot of answers that are higher than the first guesses I usually get. So good job. Um, let me cycle back to competition. Someone in the Nearpod had asked about competing. As I mentioned earlier, competing is not a requirement, but usually each semester I try to provide one opportunity to attend an actual math counts competition if you're interested. It's totally optional. Um, it's really fun when in the fall, if the competition we can participate in is the one that's hosted by the San Antonio Spurs, we get to go to San Antonio and actually compete on their home court down on the hardwood. It's a lot of fun, uh, but that's optional. It's on a Saturday. Um, I always tell the kids, I can't kidnap you and force you to go to a competition. So that's completely optional. Um, we also have informal competitions that we have fun with. Uh, for example, someone had asked about the whiteboard races. We do those usually to practice some of our speed skills like when I teach students about shortcuts to make multiplication faster and easier with less 
scratch work. Then we'll do our wakeboard races to try to push ourselves to improve our speed. We also uh, like to practice with the countdown round, which is the, it's like the game show part of math counts really. You, you would normally in a, in a countdown round, you would compete head to head and try to buzz in with the correct answer faster than your opponent. In class, I take a little bit of the pressure off. We compete uh, as groups with our table members and it's a lot of fun. Now, um, before I wrap my time up, there's two more things here. One is your final hint for this problem. Let's see if I can make this work. I'm gonna give you an expression and the answer to this expression is the same as the answer to the number of triangles. I wanna make sure I'm writing these numbers well. That is supposed to be a four. Let me try that again. Hopefully that looks like a four and plus one at the end. So jot down that uh, expression there. And if you can solve that expression, then you will know the answer to the number of triangles. And while you're jotting that down, I'm gonna make one last note. Math counts, um, the state of Texas has a history of performing well at the uh, national math counts level. And sometimes Keeling has been a part of that. And so I wanna tell you that if you decide to participate in the official competitions, and if you work extremely hard and get extremely good at it, then you could have the chance to meet the president. Like these math counts national champions had. Uh, the reason I have this picture from 2009 is because this gentleman right here was a Keeling student. And they went on to win first place team at uh, the National Math Counts competition, which was at Walt Disney World in Florida that year. And they got the chance to go and meet the president so he could congratulate them personally on their wonderful job. So now I'm gonna stop making you jealous and making you love Math Counts like I love Math Counts. Uh, and I'm going to try to turn this over. Let me stop sharing my screen. And I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. Word where he can tell you about all of the fun that you can have in math and the arts. Yes, well, not only math and the arts, but but uh, origami also, right? That's right, thanks Mr. Yeah, Word for talking about both uh, of them. <laughs> so both, if, uh, one question that we did see, look at all the answers now. Uh, one question that we did see is uh, what the difference is between math and the arts and origami. So origami is strictly based on folding paper and you do a lot of folding cranes and folding uh, other uh, animals and such in this class. It's one semester class uh, and there's it's open to sixth, seventh and eighth graders. Um, math and the arts on the other hand it has a one section of it is that we fold papers. Uh, other things in the um, math and the arts, we work on, um, well, we've done some string art, we've done some, and we've done the optical illusions. I saw a lot of those. Not every year does it, does it have to be the same. I take a poll in the class and it's basically, it's student driven. Um, so it's not the same every year at all. Um, we do some things, uh, we will do origami, but we do, I, I like, I'm a geometry teacher, I like the unit origami. So we build huge models with uh, folding shapes and I don't do any cranes in my class. Uh, but that's not to say that I can't do a crane, but uh, we could do a crane. Um, the other thing that I saw on the questions was the uh, math, in the arts versus uh, the maker's edition. Maker's edition is only for the seventh and eighth graders. So if you are uh, wanting to do math and the arts, just sign up for math and the arts and you'll be in the sixth grade version. Um, that's so that you can take it again if you really enjoy it. It's a little bit different in the seventh and eighth grade. Uh, they use different tools and uh, do larger projects and such. Um, so, I don't know, Miss Strickland. Can you describe how that was different from Maker's Edition? 
Maker's Edition is totally different in, in such that, well, it's not even offered for these guys. You know, we have a few right. seventh grade students watching. Oh, okay. So, but Maker's Edition is also interest based, but the, it's also it's open to uh, using uh, power tools or possibly or um, making learning how to knit, doing things, and so it's a lot more uh, self driven, um, and they use uh, there's a lot more responsibility on the students, and they do it's not such a whole class on the project. I still don't uh, see a whole lot of questions, so I don't know. Um, I, think I think we should move on. We're pretty good. So thank yeah. you guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to, I'm going to share my screen. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Um, so we're about halfway through um, for our teachers that are going to be presenting. I don't want to cut off your time, but I just want to be mindful of our time. Um, so that we're going to move to science. I believe we have Ms. Tazneem here. Is Ms. McClellan also here? You might just have Ms. Tazneem. That's all right. Um, so Ms. Tazneem, she teaches eighth grade science. Um, she also teaches marine biology. And so she'll be able to talk about those classes specifically, but then she'll also be able to share with us um, some information about a lot of different science classes. Ms. tazneem has been with us for quite some time, so um, she has a really good experience with these different courses. So Ms. Tazneem, if you're able to turn on your video and unmute your mic. And I believe, oh, Ms. McClellan, you are here. Awesome, too. Ms. McClellan is our seventh grade science teacher, and she teaches um, genetics fantasy and science. Did I miss one? Just those two, right? All right. Mm. Hi, everybody. How are y'all doing? I'm so excited that you're coming to Keeling. Welcome. Um, I wish I could meet you face to face, but um, I guess you just get to see my face. <laughs> uh, so science electives are hands on. Um, there's no homework, um, we take field trips, and they're student driven based on um, what interests that you have. Um, and so we got a, a lot of questions. Um, I'll start off with um, questions over genetics. Um, we have a lot of amazing support from our parents. And so I have some amazing equipment for us to work with. Um, we have the same equipment that um, they have on the International Space Station. Um, and one thing we, some of the things we do is we extract our own DNA. Um, and we also create our own experiments where we extract DNA from um, uh, different organisms. Um, and we learn how to solve a crime. We collect DNA from the crime scene. We also collect DNA from ourselves. Um, and then we have to use the equipment uh, the, that's on the International Space Station, which is a PCR machine. Um, and in that machine, you can make copies of parts of your DNA. And we can then take those copies of the DNA and we can run them through gel and compare them to the DNA we collected from the crime scene. And we can determine, um, you know, if you were at the crime scene uh, using that equipment. Um, and so once you learn how to use the PCR machine and how it works, you can actually design an experiment and propose it to NASA and ask them if they will run your experiment on the International Space Station. And if they choose your experiment, then they will. And it's amazing. Um, fantasy and science is also a class that I teach. Um, and in fantasy and science, it's completely student driven. You get to create your own stories, your own worlds. Um, you design the project that you most wanna work on. Um, so a lot of people like to design their own journals, design their own books, design their own adventures. Um, they can, you can work individually or in teams. Um, we also have groups that like to do um, 
D and D, and so what they'll do is they'll create their own campaigns, run their campaigns, and then we all present what we've done through the semester at the end of the semester, and so everybody gets their own time to present all the amazing things that they've done. So the D and D group this year, um, each person presented their character and they all presented their journey as they battled various forces in order to, you know, reach the master dungeon and um, it was amazing. Um, so then we had questions on CSI. So CSI Keeling is a forensics class um, and students, uh, you learn how to do all things forensics. So taking fingerprints, taking um, samples from the crime scene, um, looking at various things through the microscope to determine you know, who did it, looking at tire tracks and footprints and how to compare them to shoes and witness statements, whether or not they're, you know, why are witnesses unreliable? Um, I know that we've had, um, police officers from the police department come in and present. Um, and I know that it's hands-on labs all the time, a lot of fun. Um, let's see, herbology, I've got some few questions on that. And herbology is um, student-driven. Um, you use the greenhouse, plant your different plants, you make tinctures and um, lotion and bath bombs and all kinds of things that um, are using herbs and potions and natural things uh, to uh, experiment with, I guess. Um, animal studies, also very hands-on. You do uh, insect collection and identification. You study different animals in different orders. You um, also do um, some amazing dissections. Um, I believe it used to, they used to dissect the cat, um, but now thanks to really good capture and release programs where we pick up cats and they neuter the cats, there's not that many cats available. Um, so we do fetal pigs. And they are even closer to uh, the human organism. So when you dissect a fetal pig, um, you're basically a surgeon. And that's awesome. Um, gardening, amazing gardening class. Um, mostly we're gardening food products. Um, so there are flowers. Um, and, but we also mostly focus on um, different food, lettuce, tomatoes, cilantro, all those things. You grow them, you get to eat them, you get to walk around and eat food while growing things. It's amazing. Um, green team is all about climate change. And so if you are interested in climate change and you want to do something about it, join our green team. And it's going to be totally focused on learning all about climate change and then taking action. Um, so that sounds like a great elective. Um, astronomy. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, I, you're doing an awesome job. I, there's a couple of questions that I keep seeing on repeat about which el science electives are available to sixth graders and which ones are available for um, higher grade levels. And I just want to direct um, all our students to really look at the course book for your applicable grade level so that you know which classes are available to you. Um, it's awesome to still hear about all these classes so that you can make informed decisions for um, the next year and have something to look forward to. But if you're looking for classes that are specifically available as a sixth grader, um, there's like a quick one pager called the planning sheet on our website. And so if you have that open, um, you'll be able to see that gardening is available, green team, we have science fair, um, animal studies, CSI, fantasy and science, imagineering, which is um, kind of like a new adaptation of a, of a previous course that we had, and then walking with dinosaurs. So that's pretty much what the limit is uh, for sixth grade classes that are available to you, um, just so that we we can kind of focus um, our attention on those. But please feel free, Ms. McClellan, to still share about some of the classes that students can look forward to the following years. Okay. Um, let's see. Science of Dystopia was also asked about. 
Um, and that's also a student driven course um, where you choose different books to read and you look at how um, different dystopian events are presented in the scientific basis for those events. Like how real is this? How likely is this? Um, and have a lot of discussions and working with your peers, looking at which dystopian realities are we really, really looking forward to here, people? <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like I made a list. Oh, Imagineering. That was the um, other class that was asked about. And Imagineering is amazing. Um, imagine all the things that you could do. It's tinkering. Um, it's all um, engineering based. Uh, so you walk in and you get a challenge and then it's like, here's all the things you have, um, build this bubblegum machine. Um, I think they built like a candy machine out of things that were just lying around in the classroom. It's pretty awesome. Um, and there's just all sorts of different engineering challenges. And I'm sure that if you had your own challenges, um, building bottle rockets, um, testing those, that's really fun. Um, I know they used to drop eggs over the balcony and um, from the roof of the building um, and design, um, you know, the idea was like you're protecting the egg and can you drop it from various heights and your egg is still intact. It's a raw egg. Pretty fun. A little bit. Can you describe the difference between Science Olympians and the club uh, that's available after school as well? Mm -hmm. So I believe that Science Olympians and Imagineering are pretty much the same course. Now they're all they're mostly engineering challenges. Um, the club science Olympiad, which is run by our amazing parents, um, is a competition that you can go to. And there's so you can join the club and you go after school and you meet with the people who are in the club and then you all compete as a team. Um, there's there's like engineering challenges where you're designing something and then competing with other schools from across the state, um, like a bottle rocket challenge where you see um, if your bottle rocket flies, it, like how the flight time that the bottle rocket has, for example, and you're competing with people all across the state. Um, and you, what you're trying to do is get to nationals and you're trying to win nationals. Um, and we've been to nationals several times um, as a school. Um, it's an amazing experience competing with people all across the nation. Um, so there are different categories in that in the competition. There's engineering categories, and then there's also just like knowledge where you're just studying genetics and then you just take a test um, and you show off how much you how much you know, and you're just competing with people um, based on who gets the highest grade on the test. Um, and then there's like um, I think experiments and things where you're looking at experimental. Um, science and maybe you walk into a room and they have something that you um, a, a thing a problem you have to solve um, using different scientific equipment. Hi everybody! <laughs> I miss seeing your faces. It's so strange to interact without you here. I'm so excited <laughs> to see you next year. Thank you so much, Miss McClellan. That's awesome. Um, I I think. I think you covered a lot of the questions. Um, can you describe how much homework you might see in any of these electives? No homework. We will not have homework. We will not do that to you. Um, we just want to have fun. We want to explore your interests. We love to hear your feedback. We love to work with you on whatever you're interested in. So please feel free to take any elective and help us make your day better every time you come in our room. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Ms. McClellan. Um, I don't, I, I feel like you answered a lot of the questions that were here. So sorry, everyone, if, if there was something that we missed, but I think she did an amazing job of addressing um, and kind of giving you a big picture of all those courses. Um, it's really difficult to talk about all of the science courses and all the details involved with it. You'll just have to experience it to, to really um, enjoy, you know, what, what the full experience is all alike. Um, I see a few questions about, um, you know, you know, why certain classes are only available uh, for certain grade levels. Um, and please note, you know, 
we do our best to try to get you in all the elective courses that you select, um, but we do want to make sure that um, everybody is aware that if you don't get into your, you know, number one top choice classes this uh, upcoming fall or upcoming spring semester, you still have two more years to go through our program to still enjoy and still find the right courses that match your personality. So um, don't feel too bad if, you know, not all these classes are um, available to you just yet. Um, a lot of courses need you to uh, learn some basic skills in our core classes first so that you can apply those skills in our elective classes later. So um, we're, we're teaching um, you know, those skills as we go on. So just be, be patient um, and just enjoy the time that you are in those classes um, and that way you get the full experience. Um, anything else, Ms. McClellan, that you wanna share? No, I just want to say thank you, and I miss school so much, and I'm so excited to come back next year. I know, and science is amazing. Let's yeah. end it with that. <laughs> thank you. Thank All you. right, so we are going to keep it moving to um, our next subject. Um, we, we just completed science, and so um, we have our social studies department representatives. Um, we have both of our department chairs here, Miss Martin, uh, she teaches speech and debate, and Miss Jones, she teaches our eighth grade social studies classes. And they've been with our program for a long time. Uh, they have children that have gone through the program, and so they can also maybe speak to um, some of those general questions later on about, you know, um, some, some of the questions that families have about, you know, workload and life balance and things like that. Um, so we'll, we'll first have them talk about specifically uh, elective courses that you guys uh, have asked questions about for social studies. So Ms. Martin and Ms. Jones, uh, Ms. Martin, you could unmute your mic and it's all yours. Nice, hi y'all. It's so good. We're so excited to have you guys at Keeling. So welcome to your middle school adventure. Um, middle school at Keeling is just such an incredible experience. So we are thrilled to have you guys here. Um, my name is Jenna Martin and I am going to talk a little bit about some of the sixth grade electives. And then I noticed also on the choice board, you guys had some questions about some seventh and eighth grade social studies electives. And Ms. Jones will be answering a lot of those questions as well. Um, Ms. Jones and I both have, like uh, Ms. Uh, Patel said, we both have students at Keeling and they are having just the time of their lives and not just social studies electives, but also all the other amazing electives that we have to offer. So lots of fun choices, really you can't go wrong. So welcome. We have four, Social Studies offers four electives at Keeling for sixth graders. They are Speech and Debate 101. It's an introductory speech class. We also have History of the Game. It's all about baseball. And that is one of our Social Studies teacher's passions. He knows everything about baseball. So if you are a baseball fan, that is definitely a class for you. We also have a broader look at uh, sports. And society and that's the elective called sports and society and that's also offered to sixth graders and then we have a class that we offer every two years in an election cycle called party politics and it is definitely like a really fun party in that class because you do so much hands-on learning learning about the different political parties um, the election cycle we hold the school-wide mock election so I'll talk a little bit about those electives and then uh, feel free to start asking us questions too about those electives and also seventh and eighth grade electives. Um, speech and debate um, is so much fun because it's an introductory speech class. And so you do not just debate, but you also do speaking skills. So how you project your voice, how to feel confident speaking in front of people. And it's really cool because we build a really close community. So people feel really confident and comfortable getting up and speaking. I saw some of the questions were, do you debate both sides? And the answer is always, you always look at multiple perspectives in a debate. It's how you make your own argument even stronger. 
So the class starts off by doing a really cool marketing activity, um, usually involved with sweet treats like candy. Um, and so we have to sell that and use all kinds of types of advertising techniques and um, learning about logos, pathos, ethos, and pers the art of persuasion. And then we move into some individual speaking activities, and then we end with really fun debates. And I also you, saw you guys asked about choices. You guys always choose what you want to debate. We decided as a class, and we usually choose anywhere from three to four topics, depending on how big the class is. So that one's really fun. It's very student driven as well. You guys have a lot of choices in what you talk about, what you debate, how you market um, the candy. So lots of uh, fun student centered activities. Uh, History of the game, it's all about baseball. Um, you guys do everything from discussing the history of baseball, watching baseball games, learning the rules, watching movies. Um, you talk about different uh, mathematical and science aspects about baseball, which is really cool. And you also learn about how baseball influences culture. So if you are a baseball fan, that teacher is so dynamic and really, really is passionate about sharing his knowledge of baseball. That's a really um, cool elective. Then we also have sports and society. And that... <laughs> Every time I walk into that elective, they're either like playing a game, they're actually playing a sport, but like not like super competitively, like to analyze the sport and to learn about the sport. They also talk about the history of sports. So they learn a little bit about like, for example, um, how the Olympics has been boycotted or um, different events that have surrounded the Olympics, like Jesse Owens, for example. Um, they use all kinds of really cool project-based learning activities. So a lot of times students get to choose what different sports they talk about or emphasize, which is really fun. So it's a really dynamic um, elective that happens inside the classroom and also outside the classroom. And then finally, we have party politics. And I love this class. This class, okay, so it's really fun. We talk about the history of political parties which is really interesting because in the United States, we had no idea that political parties were going to even happen. They just sort of happened. Um, and then we make things like we do a party convention where we make silly party hats to represent the different political perspectives. We also learn a lot about why people vote the way they do or why people don't vote, which is also really cool. So we explore multiple perspectives about how Americans feel about the different political parties or how they feel like not very involved in um, political parties. And then we also hold the school-wide uh, mock election, which is also super cool. So we make uh, commercials. We also try to educate students about the different candidates, not just the national candidates, but also the statewide and local candidates, which is really cool. We bring in various political parties to come in and talk about why they're passionate about um, their perspectives, why they're passionate about politics. So there's lots and lots of information. And again, it's a lot of hands-on project. It's, it's really a celebration of the democratic experience. So it's a lot of fun. Um, Shannon, do you wanna start fielding questions? All right, before you continue, well, there was one question. Um, can you talk about the difference between um, speech and debate and the club? Um, oh, yeah. What requirements might be? Do you have to take the class to be in the club? Things like that. Yeah, that's a great question. So for speech and debate for sixth graders, and then we also offer a more advanced, just exclusively debate class for seventh and eighth graders. That's more debate that we try all different styles of debate. It's also where you choose the topics and you get to learn a little bit how to be a better debater, get to analyze perspectives. The club is more competitive. So if you're interested in learning about how high school debate happens, and that's what we call CX style, that's two on two debate, where you debate one topic the entire year, that club is where you should go. It's awesome. We have 
okay, we have some of the most amazing debaters at Keeling. In fact, we have kids who have gone through our program that are now on debate scholarships in college. And that program is actually run by the Central Debate League here in Austin. And we have an incredible sponsor who also works with students at LASA. And we also have college students that come in and work with our students. So the after school club is a more competitive style of debate and it's a single style debate and it's to get you ready for high school debate. Uh, we currently have a student who is um, debating on the national level. She's an eighth grader and is just, she's amazing. So that's just, it's again, it's just the more intense style of debate versus a class. And you can take both, but you do not have to take the class to be in the club. And do you guys go to uh, tournaments in 101 or just in 2.0? No, we don't do tournaments um, in either class. What we do is that would be the after school club. So if you want to compete in the CX style of debate, you would want to join the club. Thank and you, that's after Martin. school. Yeah, that's one, that's one day after school each week is where they meet. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Jones, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to jump in. I, I've been looking through a lot of the questions that are being asked, um, which Ms. Martin did a really good job of answering a lot of the questions about the four sixth grade electives. Um, by the way, I'm Shannon Jones. Um, I teach eighth grade U.S. history, and I have a current seventh grader and a soon to be sixth grader who should be watching this video as well, <laughs> um, making her decisions. Um, one thing you should know is all the social studies electives are just a semester long. Um, that was a big question. Um, so party politics, party animals, um, all of those uh, speech and debate, everything is just a semester long. Um, when I was looking through the questions that you guys posted earlier this week, a lot of questions plagues and pestilence, which teachers in our program who are teaching um, four subjects and doing so like Miss Crouch who does Parks and Rec with Mr. Hendricks. She is an um, Frisbee coach and Mr. Hendricks at Club and Model UN. Mr. was our flags and pets Club and Model UN. Uh, Ms. Century. So uh, Miss Morledge, who is our sports and center, does lacrosse for girls. So lots of different ways to get involved in the social studies, beyond just taking our But um, in terms of questions about parks and rec, you camping, they, uh, many, many different, my daughter is actually in that class right now. Um, unfortunately, they didn't to do their field trip opportunity where they were supposed to be going into caves, but also a over I believe three nights um, in a national park. Hey, Miss Jones, I think your connection is a little wobbly. I think we're getting a lot of comments that there's a glitch in the connection and I'm not hearing it so clearly either. Maybe Miss Martin, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sorry. No problem. I know connections are just a little bit off. So I don't know if Ms. Martin, if you if you heard some of the things that Ms. Jones was saying, your connection sounded a little bit stronger if you're able to kind of repeat some of that. Yeah, I think um, what Shannon's saying is so many of our social studies teachers are also really involved in lots of after school activities. So for example, Ms. Crouch, um, who also teaches the park and rec class and is a sixth grade world cultures teacher is also our ultimate Frisbee co coach. Uh, she's also an ultimate Frisbee world champion. I have to mention that. Um, Ms. Morland, who teaches eighth grade US history and she also teaches sports and society and sociology. She's also our lacrosse coach. So um, you'll see social studies teachers really involved, not just teaching really cool electives, but also all kinds of amazing after school activities and clubs. I believe, um, like Ms. Jones was saying, uh, there's questions about the Parks and Rec class. Yes, take this class when you're in seventh, eighth grade. It is 
it's so fun. Like I want to take this class. Um, and what they do every year is they go on this amazing big bend hiking, camping trip. So they teach students everything from how to pack a backpack, how to set up a tent, how to cook over a stove to um, ecology, stewardship of the national parks, of the state parks. It is such an incredible class. It's again, lots of learning in our social studies electives that happen in the classroom, but really outside the classroom as well. Um, and then I think there was another comment, Shannon, that you had about um, social, oh, I think homework comes up a lot, not, we don't do homework in social studies electives. The idea is that the learning happens through the experience. Um, so it is not homework based class. It is having the experience in the classroom or outside the classroom. And the other question, am I missing? There was something else that- there was, a, there was a question about World War II through film. Oh. Oh yeah, do you wanna try it? Your connection sounds better. Sure, yeah, I moved. <laughs> um, so World War II through film is pretty much what you get. Like they watch a ton of different films or excerpts of different films. They look into propaganda and media uh, and the role that it played during the war. Uh, if you're thinking, like if you're a history buff, this is an amazing class. And if you're thinking like, eh, I don't know if I really enjoy World War II. My daughter is taking it right now. She is not a history buff, which breaks my heart a little bit, but um, <laughs> she loves this class. She comes home talking about it every day and talking about the different pieces of propaganda that are used and different ways in which they're using films. And so uh, it is, it's a wonderful experience. We also have Civil War through film, which is very, very similar only in that it's talking about a totally different war in a totally different century and, and really, about the, the way that um, the Civil War has been talked about in the last 100 years. And so um, two very interesting electives that you can take and kind of dip your toe into history if you're not sure if it's something that you're gonna really love. Uh, and I promise the teachers are so engaging and really fun. And, and they know they know that the only way you're gonna love history is to make it enjoyable for you. And, and so we do, that, that's, our, that's our job. Um, as far as other questions that I saw, plagues and pestilence, I think that's going to be really timely. Um, that's usually taught in the fall, and that is a seventh and eighth grade elective. That's also taught by Mr. Schof, who also does conspiracy theories, which is um, a big fan favorite of a lot of our students. Conspiracy theories is one where you start by actually looking at conspiracy theories that were proven true. So here are these conspiracy theories that have actually, in the end, weren't conspiracy theories. They were actually real in history. Um, and then you move on to conspiracy theories of today, and then you get to create your own conspiracy theory. Um, I taught this a very long time ago, but I had students that were creating conspiracy theories about things that took place on our campus. And um, you present them to different people in, around the, the building in different ways. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's a very interesting way to look at what happens in history and what happens in the media and what happens in the way in which history is told and how sometimes those things that seem like conspiracy, conspiracy theories actually are real stories. But otherwise, um, Ms. Patel, I'm not sure. I think we answered all those questions. I think you guys did awesome. Thank you so much between the two of you. I think we got a lot of social studies questions covered. Um, I think the biggest thing for our students is to know that a lot of the social studies electives become more available in seventh and eighth grade. So to, um, there's really great ones available in sixth grade. So take advantage of those while you can. And then um, most of those will still be accessible in, in seventh and eighth grade too, but then we add additional options uh, in those grade levels. So um, kind of I know a lot of students are really looking forward to those classes, which is awesome. Um, so you'll just hang tight to when you have that opportunity to select those uh, for the following year. Um, so if we are able to move on, um, Ms. Johnson, are you here? Yes, you are. I am here. So I am going to um, just introduce you really quick. Ms. Johnson is our amazing, amazing um, coding teacher. Uh, she teaches um, coding, intro to coding, advanced coding, and um, she started the uh, 
robotics classes, correct? Yes. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I, am, I don't know how to get out of full screen. I don't, oh, what did I do? Sorry. Okay, I don't so think tiny. Am I, I'm not sharing my screen, screen am I? Okay, there we go. Um, just for everybody viewing, um, we just have two more departments to get through. So um, thanks for staying logged in and, and engaged. Um, and so Ms. Johnson's gonna talk about specifically like technology specific type courses, um, including robotics. Um, and then we have Mr. Garcia that will be talking about CTE, what that is and some amazing classes um, in that department. And then at the very end, um, we'll give like the last 10 minutes of this time to kind of talk about broad general questions and then next steps moving forward. So um, just hang tight if you are looking forward to um, asking some, some different questions beyond elective classes. But for now, we're still focused on just elective class questions. So Ms. Johnson, I will turn it over to you. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you all for hanging in on a long call. I appreciate it. Um, welcome, welcome to Keeling, first of all. We've, everybody said that, but uh, I wish I could see you all in person. This is usually a very fun event in person and uh, we're doing our best to make it fun for you today. Um, I teach three classes at Keeling. I teach an intro, to, excuse me, four, intro to coding class, a girls section of intro to coding that we're calling Girls Can Code. I teach an advanced coding class and then, a, and then an advanced robotics tinkering class called Make It With Code. The first two classes are for sixth graders. So the intro to coding and Girls Can Code. And I'm just gonna talk about intro to coding, but it, whatever I say about intro to coding applies to both of those classes. The advanced coding and the make it with code are both for seventh and eighth graders. Um, and you can ask me about that if you'd like, and I will talk about those as well. But the focus here today is probably on the sixth grader class, although I guess we have seventh graders uh, coming in, which is awesome. Um, <clears throat> so I wanna first talk about a course that I'm not teaching, which is robotics. Um, I did used to teach it and, um, and there was a lot of interest on the boards uh, in robotics. So, um, I just want to mention that one. It's a semester long class. It is Lego based. So if you love Legos, that is the class for you. Students build and code uh, Lego robots. Uh, they use the Mindstorms, the EV3s, um, and they, uh, it's a full semester. There's a lot of engineering involved. It's taught by Ms. Delgado, who was an Intel engineer. She's fantastic. She's at home with her baby right now. Um, but that's a that's an excellent semester long class, a lot of fun. It's a great class for sixth graders to get your feet wet if you've never done robotics. Class to take if you have done robotics. So um, I'm a, a fan of that class, and uh, you can ask me any questions you like about that one. Um, my intro to coding class. I think one of the bigger questions I get on that one is, uh, you know, who, who takes this? I've coded a lot. Should I take this class? Let me tell you guys. Intro to coding is for everybody. It's an intro to coding at Keeling. And it is a class for new coders, brand new coders. You need no previous experience at all. But it's also a class for experienced coders. And I'll explain why that is. It's a very personalized class. We say in the teacher business, it's differentiated. What that means is you are gonna start at your own place and you will work at your own pace. So this is a class, you will never be bored in this class. I don't care how much coding or how little coding you've ever had. It's a lot of fun. Most students report that this class is hard. Coding is not the easiest thing in the world, but it's also a lot of fun. So uh, I hope every student that takes this class gets a sense that coding can be a way to express yourself personally. And uh, that's a, a sometimes a surprising result for students who take it. We. Um, we start out in scratch. That gives me a chance to see where everybody is. Um, and then students will move into uh, the Python language. So that was one of the bigger questions is what languages do we use? So we start in scratch, move to Python again at your own pace. So we, um, I need to see where everybody is at the beginning. Um, and once you have mastered ideas like variables, conditionals, loops, and randomness, then you can move on in Python. Python is an amazing coding language. We use it in the advanced class and it's used extensively in the real world. So Python is what lets us do cool real world things. That's why we learn it. 
I'll talk about the advanced class more in a minute. So in, in, in the class, we do things like Mad Libs, choose your own adventure. You know, what can we use coding to do? Um, we do nutrition programs. We work with the cooking classes um, who come in and help us to develop nutrition programs. Um, we do rock, paper, scissors, things that you're familiar with to, to learn algorithmic thinking. Um, but the projects will be at your level. Occasionally, I have a student who really has done a ton of coding and they're given harder projects. That's, that's just how this works. Um, eventually, uh, in, in Python, we will do Python turtles, if you know what that is. It's a lot of fun. It's a way to do art with coding. Um, so you'll find that in our coding classes, all of your other electives and all of your other subjects work into, into the coding. So we code gardening projects and we code debate projects and we code uh, political um, campaigns and all the electives that you've just heard about have applications that we can use coding to improve. Um, Harry Potter, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but you'll do Python projects at your own level. And then we also work with the Raspberry Pi. So we have this little guy here. Um, this is a computer, if you've ever worked with a Raspberry Pi. And we have a version of it that is in the International Space Station. I think Ms. McClellan mentioned that she does some things with the International Space Station. We work with that as well. Um, that's, uh, that's a way that we uh, can hack Minecraft. So we do Python coding of Minecraft. That's a very popular thing that we do. And then at the end of the semester, you make your own web page. You learn HTML, CSS. If you don't know what those are, no big deal. You would learn and, um, and make your own web page. So that's, um, that's intro to coding in a, in a nutshell. Um, uh, the, uh, and then the girls uh, section would be pretty much the same content. That's the first time I've, I've taught it this fall. So we'll see uh, how we can keep that uh, class fun as well. The advanced coding class does require the intro to coding class. So you would need to take that if you'd like to take advanced coding. So that's also a semester class, seventh and eighth grades. Um, and that's where we really get to do the very cool real world stuff. Um, it's different every semester. I look and see what's happening in the world. Um, this year we're doing what well, we have done. Um, big data with Python. How do you download big data sets? So um, web scraping, if you've ever heard of that. Some of these things are very technical. Um, how do you use Twitter? To control things. How do you access Twitter data? That's pretty amazing. You, you develop superpowers if you take advanced coding. Uh, we do a lot with cybersecurity. So um, students learn the difference between hacking and cracking. Uh, we do fun hacking things in class where it's safe and okay and by the rules. Um, and we, um, we also uh, coding and breaking code. We do all this in Python. We do cybersecurity competitions. So we're doing that right now uh, my advanced coders are doing a national cybersecurity competition called CyberStar. Really cool challenges. You learn a lot of Linux. You learn a lot of uh, technical things. And then we do event um, artificial intelligence. So that's a lot of people's favorite thing. Um, how can seventh and eighth graders do their own AI models? Um, we have done AI models uh, for all kinds of things. We made chatbots for sixth graders last year. We have um, uh, one of the most fun projects we did was generating ice cream flavor names with an AI. We got um, featured on a TED talk last year doing that. So, um, and then the back part of the class is your own projects. So the students have time in this class to pursue their own interests. Is it robots? Is it you know, internet connected things? Is it um, gaming? Um, any kind of application of coding that you're interested in, the last six weeks is pretty much your own projects, project-based learning. So that's uh, advanced coding. I'm not looking at the questions. Ms. Patel, do you have anything? Sure. Um, a couple of the questions um, are talking about students who um, would like to take advanced coding in seventh and eighth grade. Is it a requirement to take intro to coding in sixth grade? Yes, it is. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I would say in five years of teaching, I have had maybe two students who really were well prepared to take advanced coding. Um, having not taken it before. So um, there's more to advanced coding than just knowing the ins and outs of Python. Um, it's a lot about um, understanding computational thinking, about um, applying metacognition. If you don't know what metacognition is, you need to come take the class. There's the rubber duck behind me back here. That's a very important part of our uh, classes. But if you have not really uh, written and debugged a lot of your own code, um, 
you should come take intro to coding. It's, it's really fun for everybody. I have very rare to find a student with a lot of previous coding experience who does not enjoy the intro class. So uh, yes, it is required. Um, let's see what other questions are coming up about the intro class. I, I uh, saw a question on the board. Um, and I'll talk about the other, um, I'll talk about make it with code in a second. I saw a question that I really liked, which was how much do you learn in the two coding classes? Uh, my answer to that is how much do you want to learn? Um, I have students who have uh, made real live um, applications. The debate student that Ms. Martin mentioned earlier, um, she made an app, this eighth grader made an application to download debate data from all over the country. She did a web scraping application. Um, she learned how to do that in this class. Um, it's really up to you what you're interested in, what you want to use coding for. Um, so, um, you know, there's no homework, no tests in these classes. It's not like a high school class where we have a specific curriculum that we go through, or there's certain things that I, I uh, uh, you, know, you have to learn. And uh, it's more about the projects. It's more about what you are interested in using coding for. Um, Do you want to talk about um, Girls Who Code? Yeah, so this is the first time we've tried this. Um, and I just wanted to offer a, a place for uh, girls, mostly sixth graders, to come and learn to code. It's a, maybe a little um, less, less boy oriented. Um, I think we're just going to try this and see what happens. It was suggested to me. There are girls coding camps. Um, and it might be a, a, an interesting environment for, for girls. And we're going to see what uh, creative juices uh, occur uh, when we uh, have a girls se separate section. So I, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. And Ms. Johnson also um, hosts our Cyber Hit Patriots Club after school. Do you want to just do a small uh, talk about yeah. the difference between that and your coding, coding classes? Sure. Cyber Patriot is, a, is a, a cybersecurity competition. It's a national competition. It goes from September through um, January. And um, it's open. Uh, we sometimes have sixth graders come. It's usually a, a really better experience for seventh and eighth graders because you get on a teams of five to six students and it's very helpful if you have friends that you want to be on a team with. Uh, you're welcome to come. We will have sign up in September for that. Um, and this is, um, it's an online competition. Uh, the, uh, it's difficult, but we have lots of students involved. We've been very successful. Last year there were 100 middle school teams in Texas uh, we had eight middle school teams and we finished first, second, third, fourth, and fifth in Texas. So we, we, we've, we're doing well on this uh, competition, but it's all about, um, oh, it's, it's white hat hacking. I saw a question about that, but it's um, uh, hardening system. So it's not quite the same that we do in class. In class, we actually do white hat hacking. So in class, we use Kali Linux, if you know what that is. We learn um, about other um, vulnerabilities and attacks and how to prevent against those. It's, it's, it's more a preventive uh, cybersecurity in, in Cyber Patriot. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Um, were there, I'm sorry, were there- One more. Okay, yeah. go for it. I just want to mention Make It With Code. That's also for seventh and eighth graders. This is a, an advanced robotics tinkering uh, class. I know Imagineering was mentioned. Advanced robotics is basically uh, a, a Make It With Code is a physical computing class automation where you can apply automation to almost any elective that you're taking in Keeling. Um, how, you know, how do we apply automation to gardening? Or how do I do, uh, if you're interested in sewing in the fashion class, how do I do um, uh, electronic um, lights on my uh, clothes, conductive thread, that, that kind of thing, drum machines, uh, robotics. So again, that's a class where we work through things like 3D printing, uh, design ideas. Uh, we've been working with um, these little robots. They're awfully cute. Um, oops, I fell off of it. Um, and we work with micro bits a lot in that class, uh, but if students uh, want to use uh, Arduinos, they can do that. Um, so that's again a class that really is student driven, student project driven, and is um, a ton of fun. Yeah, that's almost my favorite class. What can you build out of cardboard and then automate it? That's what we're going to find out here with the at-home part of this class that's coming up. Um, so that's a, that's a little robotics, engineering, tinkering, everything in uh, make it with coding. That, coding's not required for that class, but it is an advanced class. 
Awesome. I think we covered a good amount of them. So thank you so much, Ms. Johnson, for your time. And then um, we're going to go ahead and move to CTE questions because um, I did see some questions regarding typing and I was like, Mr. Garcia, that's the perfect question for you. Um, so for everyone, um, Mr. Garcia is uh, one of our career and technical education teachers. He um, teaches keyboarding and um, skills for living. And so he'll be able to talk about some of those different CTE courses that you guys are all interested in. So take it away, Mr. Garcia. Well, hello everyone. Can everyone, everyone hear me okay? <clears throat> okay, good, good. So um, uh, yes, my name is Mr. Garcia and I'm part of the CT department, which is Career and Technical Education. And is specifically, I teach um, Touch Systems Data Entry, also known as Keyboarding and uh, uh, Skills for Living, which is Investigating Careers. Um, so I'll start off with um, keyboarding and talk a little bit about that. And so as the name suggests, yes, we are uh, learning how to do proper touch typing uh, technique in keyboarding, um, whether you know you start with kind of zero kind of understanding of correct touch typing, or if you've been practicing it or and you have some experience with it, regardless of whether, where you're at, um, you will become better at your touch typing uh, by taking the course. Uh, the goal there is to have all students typing uh, 30 words per minute with 90% accuracy or better by the end of the semester. But like I said, if you come with some experience already and you're, you're typing 20 or 30 words per minute, there's no reason why you couldn't double that. Um, I have an example of a student who uh, came to the course and he was at the very beginning of the course typing 55 words per minute. And by the end of the course, he was well over 100. And so regardless of where you're at, um, you can pick up and practice um, your typing skills and get better at it. And again, typing is so important. It's just uh, kind of a natural extension of writing. Um, it just, it makes doing your work a lot easier. Um, you know, if you like doing things the easy way, then learning how to type is definitely something you're gonna wanna learn to do. Um, obviously it's gonna have, it's gonna pay off immediately uh, in Keeling because you're gonna be doing a lot of um, research and papers and um, things of that nature uh, in Keeling, but also as you move on into um, high school and college. And so it's really important to learn how to type. Um, but uh, that's not the only thing we do in keyboarding. It's again, technically it's, its name is Touch Systems Data Entry and it's a business course. And so we do have a focus on business. And so what we do with that is we also work with creating proper business documents and communications, uh, such as um, business letters, memorandums, resumes, um, you know, just learning proper technique and formatting for all those documents. Um, we work with um, PowerPoint presentations and we also uh, do a little bit of work with Excel. Um, we uh, stay with the Microsoft suite of Office products. We don't really do a whole lot with the Google, but um, uh, we do work on um, with uh, Microsoft uh, Word and like I said, um, PowerPoint and also Excel. And, um, and then we do, you know, again, uh, learn proper um, formatting for different types of business communications and documents. Um, now, uh, as far as my other course that I teach, which is all skills for living, um, and that's an investigating careers course. And that's um, basically, as the name suggests, we do a lot of investigating careers, pathways. Um, specifically, we um, there is a, a part of the semester where um, students are allowed to kind of freely explore different careers, um, different areas, things that they're interested in, look at the different career clusters and kind of get to know what they're interested in or um, what types of um, career clusters are best uh, suited for them, which ones match best with their interest and uh, what they like and um, what they're um, most interested in. But then we also move uh, with, to a focus on family and food and finance. And so, um, you know, as the semester progresses, we move into family. We talked a, a little bit about the jobs in that career cluster, such as child care, counseling, family counseling, things of that nature. Um, and then again, we, we, from there, we move on into food. So we talk about different, you know, we talk about food, um, kitchen safety, nutrition, um, and the different careers that are in that career cluster. And then we end the semester with finance. And in finance, as the name suggests, we work with money, talk about, um, you know, basic um, kind of uh, finance, um, such as uh, interest, banking, um, things of that nature. 
uh, and um, that pretty much kind of wraps up, you know, what we do in that course. Um, but um, also in the CT department, we have, and I'll go through them by teacher. Uh, we have Miss Matson, who does uh, culinary arts one and two, and she does fashion. And so for culinary, um, culinary one um, is mostly baking. Um, they do study nutrition and how to read and write recipes. Um, they, a couple of examples of things that they make are smoothies, mac and cheese, and maybe like spinach quesadillas. I know one of the questions was um, about uh, vegetarians. If you're vegetarian, do you have to work with meat? And you don't because they actually don't work with meat in culinary one. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about um, handling any meat product. Uh, culinary two, though, if you do go into culinary two, they do work with meat in that course, but um, uh, they do have alternatives if you don't want to work with, um, you know, beef, chicken, obviously any any meat products. Um, so there, there would be alternatives for that. Um, Ms. Matson also does fashion, uh, which um, uh, that discusses the elements and principles of design. And um, they focus on uh, the first uh, six weeks on sewing, hand sewing, I should say. And so some of the hand sewing projects include, um, you know, felt phone case or stuffed animal. And then um, the other uh, two, six weeks, um, they do work with machine sewing. And a few of the examples there are making pillows or backpacks. And uh, again, um, that's uh, Miss Matson in, in, uh, in fashion. Uh, moving on to Mr. Spears, uh, he does um, a, a few courses as well. He does. Uh, graphic design one and two, anime and animation. And so one of the questions um, was, that I saw was about anime and animation and if it was the same thing, and that is not the same thing. Um, so uh, real quick, animation is about creating animated visuals. Um, you work with, you know, that would be where you make commercials or stop motion, um, stop motion kind of little um, films. Uh, whereas anime, anime, is um, for appreciating Japanese media. So that's the difference between those. Uh, he also, like I said, does graphic design one and two. And uh, graphic design is, is all about problem solving through um, graphic design using Photoshop and other computer aided software. Um, and then also uh, Mr. Reams uh, is also in our department. Ms. Reams does construction and manufacturing. And so, um, you know, as that name suggests, you are making things, you do a lot of, uh, you work with a lot of uh, tools there. Um, you're work doing woodwork there. Um, a couple of examples are, you know, making cutting boards. Um, you do, uh, he also does um, the CO2 car. So you design um, the CO2 cars and then you cut it out um, and uh, um, use um, the different uh, tools in his classroom, such as band saws, table saws, um, drill press, um, other, you know, uh, other types of power tools. And so if you really like uh, working with your hands, that's a, a good option for you. Uh, and uh, I think that kind of covers all of the different courses um, that we do in CTE. Um, let me see, a couple of the questions. Do you get to eat food in culinary arts? Yes, absolutely. You get to eat what you make, for sure. Um, can you be in uh, any grade? Yes, it's open to all grade levels. Um, so you can be in sixth, seventh, or eighth, and uh, those are all open to you. Obviously, culinary two and graphic design two is there's going to be a prerequisite for those. Um, you would need to take um, the first part of those before you can move on to the second part. Um, oh, keyboarding for a high school credit uh, at Keeling, we don't offer that. So our keyboarding course is not offered for a high school credit. Um, I will say um, about keyboarding, a couple questions like, is it required? Um, although it's not specifically required for our school and to, right. to you know, middle school requirements, um, it is highly recommended to take that course uh, before you take additional CTE right. courses because this exactly. is usually a fundamental requirement before moving on to advanced um, courses or especially high school credit courses. So if there's Absolutely. A course when you move into high school that you're like oh I really want to get into you probably have to take keyboarding first. exactly uh, um, that's exactly what I was about to say um no it's it's not required a keeling or for graduation from high school however there are some electives in high school where it is a requirement 
And so if you don't take it in middle school, um, there's not a keyboarding course in high school. You would have to find an alternative course um, that, you know, keyboarding is not the only way to get um, that prereq to take the other courses that follow. But, um, you know, getting it done and taken care of in middle school makes a lot of sense. Plus, again, you know, uh, keyboarding is so important and it allows you to do things so much more efficiently, especially with your schoolwork. Uh, it's highly recommended to take it in, a high, in, excuse me, in middle school. Um, Ms. Patel, do you see any other questions in there? I, I feel you got it. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you so much for giving us a good rundown of all those different courses. Um, our CTE department, there's, there's a lot of different courses that you offer yeah. and a lot of them build year after year. So it's really great. And then they continue culinary into one. high school. Yeah, take culinary too if you start, you know, and they, they are sequenced into high school. Um, we are starting to now offer eighth graders. Um, high school credit, uh, CTE courses, um, there's a few available. So when your student becomes um, an eighth grader, the, you know, that's something to maybe look forward to as well. Um, but I think we are gonna try to start wrapping things up. We have about nine minutes left. Um, and so thank you department representatives. You did an amazing job of helping us answer some of those questions. Um, there are some general things that we want to address. Um, questions about choice sheets um, and, and how many classes and all those things, right? So um, I really wanna make sure that everybody has a chance to go look at the Nearpod lessons uh, because it really does describe what um, our A day, B day schedules would look like, how many elective classes you could potentially be based in. It's really dependent on if you are in uh, an everyday math course, or if you are in, um, and or if you are in a year long uh, elective course. So for you to know which classes are year long or semester long, you really need to look at the course descriptions and the planning sheet that we've provided. Unless if it's otherwise stated, all of our electives are semester long. The ones that are year long, uh, say a YR next to them on the choice sheet. Um, most of our fine arts classes are year long, um, our journalism classes, and I believe that's it. So um, that can kind of help you uh, plan this. Um, when you do your choice sheet, you're gonna be selecting 15 classes. And I addressed this in the Nearpod video of why 15. Um, because we're trying to get you in the classes that you want, but we also um, can't have, you know, we, we only have one section of food for thought. We only have one section of, um, you know, speech and debate. So there's certain classes that have limited space. And so that's something to just keep in mind. If you don't get into that class this year, it's okay. You can you can put that on your choice sheet the following year. So just keep that in mind, um, and you're you won't know what classes you get placed into until August when we send out those schedules. So emailing us over the summer will not speed that process up. Um, you will have to wait until we send those all out in August. Okay. Um, Last but not least, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna let all of our teachers kind of just say goodbye um, if you're still on on chat. So if you guys want to do one last goodbye, um, any any words of advice, um, parents that are listening in might want to also hear from our our teachers that are also in wearing that hat as well. Um, this is your time to kind of just wrap things up. And then at the very end, I will tell families how to access the Google choice form. So Strickland, go first. Yep. Okay, I don't have any kids, so I can't offer you any advice from the parent side, but I can tell you as someone who's worked at Keeling for more than 20 years, we are so excited to see you guys next year. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And we are looking forward to working with you in the future. Thanks guys. Mr. Garcia, go for it. 
Sorry, I had to mute there. Um, yeah, uh, well, uh, just advice. I mean, I, I really can't say it uh, strongly enough how important it is to take keyboarding. Don't miss the opportunity to take keyboarding while you're in middle school. Um, you know, I, I think if you don't take it later on when you're in high school or college, you're going to regret it. I know I'm very thankful that I uh, took it when I was in middle school. I remember doing it very similarly in a class just like mine with a bunch of computers. And so I am very grateful and thankful. So again, parents, students, don't miss out. Uh, take keyboarding while you're at Keeling. That's it. Mr. Ball, you want to go? Yeah, I just wanted to quickly um, touch, like when you're going to see the choice sheet in a moment, um, there's going to be a top part of it that has like a fine art survey part of it where it's going to have band, choir, and orchestra listed. Um, that's going to be a spot that everyone will fill out on the choice sheet. Um, I do want to mention if you're really, really interested in taking a fine arts, make sure that you put it in your top three choices because the fine arts survey part is actually kind of like, it's just like a data collection set. It's, it's technically separate from the actual um, course rankings. So if you're wanting to take a fine arts class, uh, just make sure that you put it within your top choices on your choice sheet. Um, other than that, um, I'm excited to meet you guys in person and I hope um, if you do choose band or orchestra that we'll get to do some instrument choices or instrument tryouts, um, hopefully for the fall. <laughs> That's it. Miss Morgan, you're up. All right. Um, yeah, thank you for joining. I know this um, is a little confusing for me. I'm, I'm old and this technology curve is big for me, but I'm enjoying getting to, to learn it. Um, I wanted to say I know that I am lucky enough and I hope I'll be lucky enough this summer to work with some sixth graders before school starts to say I know a lot of you are um, nervous about how large our campus is and to say everybody's lost at first you will be lost at some point and it's going to be okay we're all going to help you find where you need to go nobody's going to yell at you for being late to a class when you're new um, there's not a single teacher administrator adult on our campus who doesn't want to see you succeed and none of us are sitting at home thinking how can we torture our new students we want you to be happy because when you're happy we're all happy so don't be afraid to ask don't be afraid to mention that you're afraid and to express that and we're going to help you feel better and and make it and it's going to be an amazing year we cannot wait to see you guys thank you thank you so much miss morgan before you leave us um i totally forgot to plug the summer camp. Um, for those of you um, that are entering sixth grade, we typically offer a summer reading camp option um, and it's one week long. The information for this is on our website under the magnet tab where you see the summer homework tab. It's also a, a space for getting more information about the reading camp. Ms. Morgan, do you wanna just let us know really quick what that's about? Sure, the reading camps are um, two hours long, really short on our campus, and they're four days because our campuses are closed on Fridays. And as, as if we can do it, you know, it's not a, it's not set that so we're not guaranteed that we're going to be able to do it is my understanding. But if we do, you'll come for two hours, you'll get to know some people, we tour the campus, we read together, we work on the sixth grade summer reading assignment. And we also spend one day that we walk to the Carver Library, which is so close to Keeling, we're so lucky to have it. Um, so students can check out a book, but they don't have to. Um, so it's just to help you get to know each other, get to know our campus, feel more comfortable, and to understand that we're all going to have a lot of questions and try and, and make everybody feel comfortable before you get there and do our summer reading together. So it's a lot of fun. I hope you'll join. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Morgan. Um, that information is on the website of how to sign up for that. Um, spots are limited. So if you are interested, please, um, you know, send that information, read through the whole information before you sign up. Um, so that you know what the expectations are as well. Um, Ms. Jenna Martin, go for it. Hi, y'all. Um, we are just really so excited to welcome you to Keeling. It's just your middle school adventure is about to start, and we are thrilled to welcome you. And much like Ms. Morgan said, the teachers are here to inspire you. We're here to help you. We're here to see you be successful. And it's such a fun place to work because um, we bring our passions and also our love of students, that's you guys, um, to class every day. So um, as a parent, I can also say it is so incredibly rewarding to have my kids be excited to go to school. 
They really love what they're learning. They love their teachers. It's really fun to hear about my colleagues as teachers because my kids, my own kids have gotten to connect with these incredible human beings that are just love what they teach and love kids. So if you have any anxiety or you're nervous, that's totally normal, but I'm also here to tell you you're about to have a magical experience. So welcome. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Ms. Jones, go ahead. Okay, it's pretty hard following Ms. Martin. <laughs> um, I have to say that uh, I know a lot of you are wondering and worrying about homework and being able to do other activities. And um, I'm gonna speak to that because my daughter, she swims competitively, she plays soccer competitively, and um, and she isn't up until all hours at night. Um, it really is about finding balance and managing your schedule and being organized. Um, and and you can you can have fun. You will love it. You um, she's in seventh grade now, so she's doing her outside sports, but she's also doing things on campus as well. Because as seventh and eighth graders, you get to participate in all of the different UIL sports. Um, uh, in sixth grade, you also can participate in the clubs that are on campus as well. But if you're worried about trying to find time, uh, there is, there is time for sure. And the teachers here, we, we love what we do. We love our jobs. Um, much like Ms. Strickland said, she'd been here for um, over 20 years. I've, I've been at Keeling pretty close to that as well. And I come back every year, not because I love history, which I do, I love history, but because I love our students and, and you are our students and you are what brings the, the special and the magic, like Ms. Martin said, to our campus. And so we can't wait to see you. And if you have questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out and ask uh, because I know every single teacher here would be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, enjoy your time and, and thanks for being here. I know two hours is long for you guys to sit here and watch us. <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Jones. All right, Ms. McClellan and Mr. Word, and then Ms. Johnson will wrap things up. There you go, Ms. McClellan. Okay, hi, everybody. Um, I just wanna say I'm super excited that you're joining our family and everything is gonna be wonderful next year. And any choice that you make is the right choice. Okay, so it's gonna be great. And I'm excited to see you. The science department is excited to see you and thank you for coming to Keeling. Y'all are the best. Bye now. <laughs> thank you. Go for it, Mr. Word. Okay, so as a, as a parent of two uh, Keeling alums that, that I would say to you, uh, don't worry about uh, choosing classes that are with your friends. Uh, everybody wants to be here. Choose the classes that you're interested in and you will find new friends. We will, you will be surprised how quickly you will find new friends in this community. So just don't worry about who you're going with and choose the classes that you, that you, uh, that you enjoy and are in, and will be interest you, um, that you'll have much, uh, much better time with that. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you. All right, they're itching to get access to that choice sheet. Miss um, Johnson, go for it. I really don't have anything to add. Uh, it's uh, so exciting to see my colleagues <laughs> for for this time. Uh, just, uh, yeah, don't worry about anything. I have a daughter who went through Keeling. She survived. She's here right now, actually. Um, so so uh, thank you for your time and uh, we'll see you in the fall. All right, thank you teachers, appreciate you guys so much. We will see each other again soon. <laughs> um, so families, um, I am gonna go ahead and share my screen with you uh, that shows you exactly where the, um, the choice sheets are. Um, parents, you should have gotten detailed information um, earlier this morning about the steps required to, to complete the choice sheet. Um, so you should have completed the Nearpod lesson already. A lot of questions are still being asked in the chat room about questions that were already addressed in the Nearpod. So I really wanna direct you back to that video um, and kind of uh, go through that piece. And if there's still something that we're missing, um, you know, you can let me know. Um, 
there's specifically guidance on how to complete the Google form on that Nearpod lesson. Uh, it specifically talks about what to do with this fine arts survey piece and what will happen with the information um, when you submit it. So uh, please take a look at that um, so that some of your questions might get answered in that method. Um, so if you are taking a look at the Keeling website, if you click on the magnet tab, just the magnet tab itself, um, you should have seen the link to get here in the first place and right underneath it, uh, all it was there the whole time, uh, was the um, access to the course selection forms. They are live right now. I went ahead and um, I, I'm allowing accepting responses at this point. So if you've already clicked on this, maybe refresh it and then it will allow you to actually um, submit your answers. Um, if you are currently an AISD student, you should be able to log in with your AISD credentials. And I highly encourage if, for you to do that um, so that two things can happen. One, if you need to log back in at all, you can do that later on. If you submit it today and you're like, hmm, I, I don't know if I did that correctly, you can still log it back in uh, tomorrow and see what you put in. Um, you are also able to edit your uh, choices until the deadline. The deadline for everybody is Monday at the end of the day, 5 p.m. So this Monday, uh, all of your choice sheets should be uh, sent in. Um, if you are um, using a computer that your parents are using or somebody else is using, highly recommend you read that tip to sign out of personal uh, Gmail accounts before um, clicking on these links. These links are only active for AISD student logins. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's some instructions there on how to do that. Um, there's a sixth grade and a seventh grade one. They are different. So if you are going into sixth grade, please complete the sixth grade form. If you are going into seventh grade, complete the seventh grade form. Um, those of you that have already completed one of these, maybe um, you are in our feeder pa pattern or um, are at Keeling already, um, you would still want to double check. Your answer should be saved there already if you logged in the first time. So you can make edits at this point. If anything, if you decided to change your mind based on any of this information, you can do that. Um, information about what advanced electives are, are also in the Nearpod video um, and their full descriptions of everything in our course book. So check that out on, under Student Live and course descriptions. Um, if you do not have AISD credentials, it is okay. You could still complete the Google form. You just need to click on the links below. Um, just be careful if you do use that option you will not be able to log back in and check your answers. You will not be able to edit it before your submission. Please do not submit multiple um, submissions because then we won't know which one to go with. Um, so it's in your best interest to really review that um, as best you can and complete that um, to the best of your ability. Um, a copy of these will be sent to the parent email addresses that have already been provided. Um, my goal is to send that to parents by April 10th. Um, and, and it's really just for your reference. You won't have access to edit these Google Forms at this point, um, but you will at least have um, you know, a copy in front of you of what your student um, entered in. Please be sure to follow up. Um, our directors will be following up with students who select band and orchestra. Um, and so making sure that students who pick one of those two performing, musically performing um, fine arts classes, we wanna make sure that those students get the instruments that they desire. So um, they will be following up with families um, through that method. So just watch out for that communication. Um, and then there are applications for AVID, Yearbook, and KBTV. And all of those applications are linked in the course book. So if you find that course description in our book, um, there'll be a link in there of how to submit those application requirements. So 
Um, I'm going to take a moment to just quickly scan um, the the chat box to see if I missed anything. We're still not finding the Google Doc. Can you share a link in the chat? I am not sure of what Google Doc you're talking about. These Google Forms are on our website, keelingmiddleschool.org. Click on the magnet tab and links to the Google Forms. You just click on it. Sixth grade will open up the sixth grade form and it will look like this. Um, languages, oh, we did not talk about languages that much because um, the only language that is available for sixth graders is Spanish. And uh, there's a couple of things that we ask you to think about. If you take Spanish, it is considered a high school credit course. Um, so really keeping in mind the transition going from elementary to middle school is already a really big undertaking, uh, let alone going into the magnet program, which uh, has some rigorous expectations associated to that. So we really wanna make sure that students are, that are going into Spanish um, are really doing it for the purpose of, of um, knowing that these will be counting as high school credit courses. So if you've already had a Spanish um, uh, exposure to Spanish through uh, being a native speaker, heritage speaker, or going through a dual language program, you will indicate that on this form. There is also at the very end, a separate Google form that you do need to complete if you are planning on trying to take a language course in sixth grade. So um, keep those pieces in mind when you're completing your, your choice sheet. Um, if you are entering seventh grade, a uh, few of you are doing this. Um, it is required to take language uh, in seventh grade and, um, and continue that language into eighth grade. And so um, to do that, uh, if you want to look at the uh, choice sheets or the, the languages that we offer, there's a wonderful video of all the languages uh, here on our website. So um, languages other than English, uh, take a look at those videos to make a better determination about which um, language would best match your needs and your personality. Okay. I am hoping that we have addressed everything that we need to. Um, there's still questions about instrument selection. That will come. So if you are interested in band and orchestra, your number one job right now is to put that in your top three choices on your Google form today when you complete your Google form, all right? And again, access to the Google form is on our website. So that will be open until March 30th. Um, I hope you're able to access that. Um, if you are currently an AIC student and you don't know how to log in, um, go ahead and use the no login version. You just won't be able to edit your submission later, okay? So I am going to go ahead and um, sign off. So I appreciate everybody's time. And thank you so much for watching. Um, we will be trying to post a recording of this. Um, I believe the live stream should be available for you to rewatch portions of it at any point. Um, and I appreciate you guys taking this time out on a Saturday to learn all about um, our amazing elective courses. I hope you guys had fun. Um, so if you have any specific questions, um, please contact the, the teachers associated with those courses. They might be able to answer a little bit more, but please keep in mind that we are um, now going to be focusing our time and attention towards changing our courses and, and um, moving towards a virtual setting uh, for you know however much time we were asked to do that. So um, if you are sending any questions, please know that there will be a delayed response. We will try to respond to every, um, every, every email that we receive, but trying to keep our questions to really the most essential is going to be um, something that we'll really appreciate on our end. So let us know. All right. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed this and we will see you as soon as we can see you. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.